Hi everyone, I'm back to talk to you more about writing to an object or person when you write a poem. So um, we talked a little bit about writing about to something that you love, um, but you can also write to apologize. There is a book called This Is Just To Say, and it's poems all about apologizing and actually writing back to the apology. So I thought these two were fun to share. It's two boys who are playing dodgeball together and they're writing apology poems to each other. So to Kyle from Ruben, it says, I got carried away. Kyle, I'm sorry for hitting you so hard in dodgeball. I just really get carried away in situations like that. Kids screaming and ducking, coach bellowing, all those red rubber balls thumping like heartbeats against the walls and ceiling, blinking back and forth like stoplights that really mean go, go, go. See, I even got carried away in this poem by Ruben. So I want you to notice too, as I'm reading it, how I'm following the line breaks, right? Every time there's a line break, I'm kind of taking a little breath. And poets do that so that they can slow you down when you're reading their poem and you can really think about the words. Um, and then Kyle writes back to Ruben, and you can kind of see their different personalities just by the way their poems look. But to Ruben, dodgeball crazy. Sorry, Rubes, for belting you as hard as I could in dodgeball. I'd like to say I wouldn't do it again, but I'd be lying by Kyle. <laughs> So he really um, slowed his down and you can see how his poem looks different from Ruben's. It almost looks like a ball being thrown, right? It kind of reminds me of that. So you can write, they say something is wonderful, like dear sky, or you could write to apologize. Okay, and then um, here is a poem from Leah, who's a second grader. And she wrote, alarm clock, o'clock, o'clock, why do you tick tock? Why do you make those loud ringing sounds in the early morning? Why do you have hands? If you do, you should have arms and legs and a head too. Be considerate. Let me sleep. You should have ears to hear your screams. So I like that um, that this poet, you know, kind of isn't happy with the alarm clock and wrote a poem to the alarm clock, right? Saying, um, you know, like, why do you have to wake me up and make all this noise? But maybe you never thought about writing to an alarm clock, right? It kind of makes that alarm clock feel like a person. And then we have a seventh grader named Laura who writes to a guitar. Guitar, how I wish my fingers could slide across your many frets and strings to create beautiful music. Guitar, why can't I play the mushy A chord? And why can't I create perfect harmonies and melodies? Why don't they blend together with the lyrics I sing and notes that go with them? So it seems like that poet's a little bit frustrated, right, by her guitar. Okay, and then I was thinking, wow, there's a famous example of writing to something. Kobe Bryant um, wrote to basketball in his poem, Dear Basketball, which was made into a short movie. Um, and you could find it on YouTube, and it's here in this um video in this presentation as well, but it's like five minutes long, so I'm not going to play it for you now, but these were the words that he wrote, that they took his words and made it into this short movie. So he said, Dear Basketball, from the moment I started rolling my dad's tube socks and shooting imaginary game-winning shots in the Great Western Forum, I knew one thing was real. I fell in love with you. A love so deep I gave you my all from my mind and body to my spirit and soul. As a six-year-old boy, deeply in love with you, I never saw the end of the tunnel. I only saw myself running out of one. And so I ran. I ran up and down every court after every loose ball for you. You asked for my hustle. I gave you my heart because it came with so much more. I played through the sweat and hurt, not because challenge called me, but because you called me. I did everything for you because that's what you do when someone makes you feel as alive as you've made me feel. You gave a six-year-old boy this Laker, his Laker dream, and I'll always love you for it. But I can't love you obsessively for much longer. This season is all I have left to give. My heart can take the pounding. My mind can handle the grind. But my body knows it's time to say goodbye. And that's okay. I'm ready to let you go. I want you to know now so we both can savor every moment. We have left together, the good and the bad. We have given each other all that we have. And we both know, no matter what I do next, I'll always be that kid with the rolled up socks, 
garbage can in the corner, five seconds on the clock, ball in my hands, five, four, three, two, one. Love you always, Kobe. So after the very tragic death of Kobe Bryant this year, so many people pulled this poem out and read this poem again and talked about how Kobe Bryant loved basketball so much and all that he contributed to the game. But his words live on after him. This beautiful letter that he wrote to basketball is forever here for us to read and think about. And that's the power of writing, that your writing lives forever, right? And we can think back and, and hear Kobe's words now, which is really special. So Kobe's poem, Dear Basketball, kind of inspired me to write, to try this too, because um, teachers really like to try things out too before they ask their kids to do it. So if we're going to be writing to an object or person, well, I wanted to try it too. So just like um, Dear Sky and Dear Basketball, um, I wrote Dear Classroom, and it's inspired by going to school um, last week and cleaning out the classroom, um, which was a very kind of sad job to do, right? So here is my poem, Dear Classroom. Dear Classroom, I thought I missed you. Missed your tables and chairs, the bookshelves and book baskets, the papers and pencils. I was wrong. I didn't miss you. I missed who is inside you, the students. The students bring you to life. Without them, your walls and windows, ceiling and door, but no joy. No noise, no fun, no life. It wasn't you that made us a class, after all. It was always the kids, will always be the kids, that make a school and a classroom a home. Love, Mrs. Sokolowski. Okay, my friends, it is your turn. Today, we'd like you to write a poem to a person or an object. Remember, poems look different from other texts. The lines are shorter and it's not written as sentences. You can look back at any of the poems in today's videos to see examples of how the poems look different. Okay, and if you feel stuck for your topic, you could think about something that you love, like Kobe Bryant loved basketball and Naomi Shihab and I love the sky, right? You could think about um, a person you love, right? They wrote about something they love, the sky and basketball, but it could also be to a parent or a grandparent or a teacher or a friend, right, or a pet. Um, also, it could be fun to write to something you hate, right? Oh my goodness, dear broccoli, dear dentist. Um, that could kind of be a fun poem to write too. You might want to write a thank you poem. There's so many people to thank all the time. People help us all the time in so many ways. Um, or an apology poem could be fun to write too. You could write a real apology or kind of a fake apology. Um, I think those are fun to write. So we're excited to see what you come up with. We hope that you enjoy writing to an object or person today.